Hello, uh, this is a, uh, you know, lecture on the carbon market mechanisms under the Paris Agreement. And then my name is Suyang Chung. Uh, I'm a professor at the Korea University, also director of the Center for Climate and Sustainable Development Law and Policy, in other words, CSD Lab. It's my pleasure uh, to talk about this important issue with all of you. I think that the audience target uh, of this uh, lecture is going to be uh, not only uh, Korean uh, students or experts, but also foreign students and experts who may be interested in understanding the carbon market under the Paris Agreement in general. So let me start with the first slide. Um, role of the carbon market, market mechanism. I think uh, uh, I assume that the many of you already heard about the uh, several carbon market mechanisms such as clean development mechanisms, joint implementation, or uh, emission trading schemes under the Kyoto Protocol, right? And then uh, there has been uh, some good practices uh, developed under the Kyoto Protocol with these three mechanisms. And then uh, I uh, put uh, a little bit different angle in terms of what is the role of the market mechanism under the Paris Agreement, and this is the, basically all about it. So as you can see under the Kyoto Protocol, as I just mentioned, we had three mechanisms, clean development mechanism, joint implementation mechanism, and ETS. And all of them were basically about providing flexible and cost-effective greenhouse gas reduction opportunities, mainly for NX1 countries. Here, as you know, NX1 countries means uh, developed countries. In other words, uh, these three mechanisms were developed and used to help a group of countries who had uh, legally binding obligations to reduce greenhouse gas emissions under the Kyoto Protocol by using this flexibility mechanism. Why it was flexible? Because uh, countries were uh, had options. You know, number one, not to use this mechanism. Number two, they could use this mechanism. It's up to totally the country's concern. And then uh, many of the practices has been focused on the CDM the project activities under the Kyoto Protocol for various reasons. But once again, there were three mechanisms under the Kyoto Protocol. And then these three mechanisms were about what? Uh, helping out developed countries to meet their emission reduction target under the uh, Kyoto Protocol. And then here, uh, maybe uh, if we want to call the uh, mechanisms under the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement are still uh, carbon market mechanisms. And then are there any similarities or differences in terms of role of the market mechanisms uh, between these two uh, different uh, you know, type of the mechanisms governed by different uh, treaties? Here, uh, as I will uh, explain about them a little bit more detail later today, uh, under, the Kyoto, under the Paris Agreement, especially Article 6 concerns about the market mechanism, and it has three different uh, market mechanisms or mechanisms uh, per se. Number one, as you can see, corporate mechanism. Corporate approaches are more specifically to talk about corporate approaches under the Article 6.2. And then uh, we also call Article 6.4 mechanism, and the treaty itself says that a mechanism, but we usually refer to a mechanism governed by Article 6.4. And there is another interesting mechanism under the Paris Agreement, uh, Article 6, that's a non-market mechanism. You might think, oh, this is all about the market mechanism. Why it is a non-market mechanism? Because uh, this mechanism was uh, introduced uh, for political purposes during the negotiations uh, proposed by the, some number of the countries who believe that not only the market mechanism, but also non-market mechanism still need to be included. However, for the purpose of the, today's lecture, uh, as uh, it would indicate as a matter of the name, then, then I will focus on the first two mechanisms, corporate approaches and the Article 6.4 mechanisms. And then uh, this is uh, next point is very important in terms of the, what are the similarities or differences between two mechanisms and that here under the Paris Agreement depending on how you design these mechanisms uh, you can uh, use them as an important tool for NDC implementation and that here 
and this implementation needs to be done under the Paris Agreement by all parties, not by only the developed countries, but also developing countries as well, which means that all these mechanisms have a potential actually to be used not only for the developing countries, but also developed countries as well. So in other words, the scope of using this mechanism has been expanded, including developing countries as well. And then, depending on how you design the mechanisms and how to use the mechanisms, actually you can use them as a way of promoting low carbon technology development and the transfer. This is very, very important because Paris Agreement says that there are three means of implementation to promote your low carbon economy. First, finance. Second, uh, you know, technology. Third, capacity building, especially for developing countries. And then depending on how you design the mechanisms, actually you can ensure the technology development and transfer can be promoted uh, through this mechanism. Of course, I'm going to talk about the finance aspect uh, right after this. And then eventually, it can uh, make a contribution to ensure the sustainable development for all the parties of the Paris Agreement. So now, as you can uh, understand, oh, it seems like a role of the market mechanism under the Paris Agreement might be you know, broader in terms of their scope, in terms of their depthness, right? And then, so this is what I'm gonna talk about. Let's move to the next slide. So as I just mentioned, Article 6 also, uh, depending on how you design the mechanism, as I just uh, said, not only promote the technical transfer and development, also it can actually help, especially for developing countries, to mobilize more financial resources. So here, uh, as you can see, the global finance architecture includes climate finance sources, include public sources, and then develop banks, right? And then including like a World Bank or Asian Development Bank, African Development Bank, right? And the private capital will be important. And then we can also put the you know, carbon markets here. And then here, what I'm saying about the carbon market uh, refers to a traditional or more like you know, mark carbon markets under the Kyoto Protocol. But depending on how you design the carbon market mechanism or Article 6 mechanism, you can actually put all of them together through implementing the mechanisms under the Paris Agreement. So in other words, that uh, uh, in case of the Kyoto Protocol, uh, we used to talk about the carbon market or climate finance. But here, uh, depending on how you design and use the mechanism, actually you can combine these two elements into one. So uh, this will be uh, one of the very excellent opportunities, especially for developing countries, actually to develop and implement their NDCs, not only just uh, providing some sort of the climate finance sources. Actually, you know, Article 6 mechanism can be a window actually to allow you to have an access to every source. So this is very, very important. I hope that uh, you uh, remember this after this lecture uh, you know, all the time. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, move to take a look at the guidance. As I said, there will be a guideline to govern the details of the Article 6.2 mechanism in other corporate approaches. This is it. As you can see, this is the first page of the UNFCCC document, actually of, about the guidance on Article 6.2. In order to agree on this document, it took years after 2015 until 2021, almost six years, even if we had a difficult time during the COVID-19, but countries finally agreed on this. So this is a document, and then, then uh, uh, in the left side of the, this slide, actually I provided a you know, main title of the, you know, this document so that you can see what are included. As you can see, there is a very important uh, component about the definition of international transfer mitigation outcomes. In order to become a uh, ITMOS, as I said, it's not a credit, it's a unit. 
In other words, uh, CO2 ton uh, can be a very important uh, unit. So uh, one, one ton CO2, right? And then two tons, three tons, and then uh, country A actually transfer three tons to country B, right? You can do it. And then as, as soon as it uh, crossed the border, it became a uh, itmos. And then here, uh, itmos also can be a uh, developed. Uh, it can be uh, you know can use the uh, different uh, measure such as kilowatt per hour. Some countries already started to export their electricity uh, using their national grid or international grid to another country. And then they seem to think that it's, uh, it's better actually for them to calculate uh, this transfer right, uh, in using kilowatt per hour. And then mitigation outcomes that only includes the you know activities to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but also it involves the removals. In other words, the things right. If you implement the red plus projects activities in developing countries, and then you can generate the credits right. Those credits. Well, if they want to use those credits between two countries by transferring from country A to country B, then, then they can be itimos because itimos uh, will include removals as well. So there are details about this important definition. I want you to read uh, you know, this definition if you want to, more, want to know more details. And the participation, who's going to participate, uh, it's very straightforward, and then the details are there. Corresponding adjustments, uh, as I said, uh, corresponding adjustments uh, uh, is a very, very important to avoid the double counting and to ensure the uh, environment integrity. So uh, international transfer mitigation outcome metrics, as I said, uh, kilowatt per hour and CO2 tons, they are all about the metrics, okay? So uh, an application of the corresponding adjustment, how to do it, and other international mitigation purposes, what does this mean? Uh, you know, it most can only be used toward the NDC, and then, but uh, there are, in, in the fi at the final moment, of the negotiations in Glasgow, uh, there is a uh, you know sudden uh, you know insertion of the uh, you know the term to be included. That's other international mitigation purposes. What are they all about, right? And then actually, to make a long story short, other international mitigation purposes include two concepts. First one is. Uh, a uh, narrower concept of international mitigation purposes like a Corsia, right? Corsia is a carbon market, uh, you know, in the aviation sector developed and maintained by ICAO. And this carbon market is not for the implement the NDC, but it has been developed actually to make a contributions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in aviation sector, right? And then now, ITMOS can actually be put uh, in Croatia to meet the purpose of the Croatia, even if they are not directly related to implementing the indices. And then another other purposes is including, um, for now we can think about the voluntary market, and then these voluntary markets are also allowed under the Article 6.2, right? As long as uh, they are subject to corresponding adjustment. Anyway, uh, it's very important that uh, you know other international mediation purposes are subject to corresponding adjustments as well. And that there is another uh, element of the safeguards and limits to transfer and use of international transfer mediation outcomes. Let me go to the next slide uh, uh, to talk about the details about the concept of the corresponding adjustment because we are talking about it. I'm sure that uh, many of you are wondering what exactly this means. So let's go to the relevant uh, slide first. So this uh, shows us the, uh, uh, you know, the concept of corresponding adjustment. This is a very, very important. So assuming that there are two parties, party A and the party B, right? Party A, party B, party B is a transferring party. Assuming there is a you know, developing country, which uh, you know, 
made uh, their efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And then their national NDC target is a year, right? And then uh, they already, uh, actually their actual emission is a year. So they have a lot of leftovers, right? And then in case of Part EA, uh, assuming there's uh, energy intensive, you know, uh, developed country, right? Their NDC target is here, right? And then however, their current inventory uh, emission is here. So they, are, they have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions a lot more, right? But because of their industrial policy, because of their national circumstances, actually they feel very, very difficult to do so domestically. So what Article 6.2 allows, you know, at the global level, what we are concerned about is the reducing greenhouse gas emissions, you know, on the earth as a whole, right? So if we would allow this four megaton, for instance, uh, to be used by party A acquiring party. That's okay, right? And then still, even if so, still this uh, country B is still, you know, it's okay. And then uh, they have uh, still two megatons left. In other words, current their emission inventory is a year. And assuming that uh, if they would uh, make four megatons to be used by party A, it end up, they end up with you know, something like emitting you know, current inventory emission level plus four megatons. So their adjusted inventory will be here, right? And then here, country A, and then their actual emission is here, however, they moved, uh, this uh, 4 megaton is not the emission, right? It's emission reduction. So they can deduct uh, emission level from here to here. So 4 megaton is uh, reduced. So their adjusted uh, inventory level is here. They can meet the target level, right? So that they can report to the UNFCCC, actually we reached our NDC target, right, uh, as planned. And in return for that, maybe country A may provide uh, finance resources to country B in return for getting this benefit, right? Or who knows that uh, they can uh, agree to transfer uh, technology to country B. There can be many deals to be made between these two countries. In terms of flexibility and efficiency and overall promo overally, uh, promoting the sustainable development, isn't it good, right? So country B has more leftovers and then they can allow that their leftovers to be used by country A. In return for that, it can receive the finest resources to further develop their economy in a sustainable way, isn't it good? Right, that's the uh, you know you know concept. And here, adjusting the this inventory of country A and country B, we call it as corresponding adjustment. If we don't do that, then then country B will refer to the UNFCC. Oh, we are oh, we emit here, and the country A will report. Oh, we emitted here, right? They will do that. Then, then there will be a double counting, double use of a four megaton. We have to avoid it to ensure the environment integrity. Now you understand what I'm talking about. So that refers to the concept of corresponding adjustment. This is a very, very important concept. And then if you are interested in Article 6, uh, you must understand this basic concept all the time. So that's about the corresponding adjustment. And then, as I said, uh, as uh, you can uh, remember, then the countries need to report their inventory to the UNFCC now under the Kyoto Protocol. Actually, this reporting was necessary only for the developed countries, in other words, Annex 1 countries. Now, this reporting must be made by both developed 
and developing countries. So both parties, no matter whether you belong to developed or developing countries, you must do it. By the way, corresponding adjustment uh, needs to be made not only between a developed or developing countries, it can be made by both the developing countries or developed countries because as I said that uh, this mechanism can be used by all the parties. Okay, so that's a big difference between the Kyoto Protocol and this Paris Agreement. And then recording tracking is also necessary as you can see because we have to ensure that every number can be traced. Right? So ambition and mitigation adaptation actions also a part of the uh, details of the guidance on the Article 6.2. So here, uh, let me uh, you know, spend a little bit more time to help out, help you out about uh, what you mean by the mechanisms on the Article 6. How many mechanisms exist on the Article 6? My answer is I don't know. Why is that? Because of, if you understand that this uh, slide, and then you will understand why I answer that way. So, as you now know, Article 6 mechanisms, Article 6 concerns about the three different types of the mechanisms, right? You know that, right? And then here, Article 6.2, and there is Article 6.4, right? And then 6.8, I'm not going to talk about it today, right? If you read Article 6.4 mechanism, as we did, actually 6.4 mechanism doesn't care about the transferring ITMOs to country B from country A. Article 6.4 mechanism only concerns about generating units or credits, you know, for now, in the negotiation, we call it as 6.4 ERs, right? This is a credit, right? This credit is to be generated, where? In a country. Article 6.4 mechanism is all about how to generate this unit. It ends here. It's their role, okay? And then once, and then 6.4 ERs to be Generate it, and then uh, this uh, unit will be transferred from country A and country B. And these transferring country uh, 6.4 years would happen as soon as it crossed the border of that host country, and it suddenly becomes what? Itmos. Okay, so itmos. So 6.4 mechanism is not about ITMOS. It's about generating the units. And then how to generate the units? 6.4 says UNFCCC we will, we will provide one mechanism. And it's up to countries, no matter whether you would like to use it or not, it's up to you. If you don't like it, you don't have to use this. And then next question will be, hey, Professor Chong, that there are other mechanisms available to generate the units. And my answer, yes, there are a lot, okay? In other words, conceptually, as I said, Article 6.2 says corporate approaches. These corporate approaches and mechanisms can be developed by the parties as long as they comply with number one, what? To promote sustainable development. Number two, what? To ensure environment integrity, right? Here I talked about the corresponding adjustment, right? And as long as uh, you designed any mechanism to ensure these two elements and to be used toward NDC, you can design anything. Because this is the uh, Paris Agreement. Uh, this is the uh, Paris Agreement agreed by the parties. And then the parties delegated a detailed format or forms of the mechanisms under the Article 6.2 to the hands of parties. Okay, so that's why it's got bottom up. And here, I, I provide only several examples that you can think about. Number one, as I just said, that if countries would like to transfer 
it 6.4 years from country A to country B toward the NDC to by promoting sustainable development and ensuring environment integrity, right? That's the one way of the corporate approach between two countries using 6.4 mechanism. So Article 6, 4, 6, Article 6 mechanism, 6.4 combined with 6.2, that can be a one mechanism, one type of the corporate approaches. What about others? In the negotiation, especially only European Union and possibly Switzerland, they sometimes mentioned about the linked ETS. You know, Europeans are very eager to link the ETS with another country's ETS. But technically, politically, I know that it's very, very difficult to one. And that there are many important issues that the countries need to think about. But anyway, if that would happen, say European Union has a linked ETS with Switzerland now, and then they can uh, you know, transfer the credits, right? And then we can uh, understand this as a kind of 6.2 mechanism. But I don't think it can be widely used. Uh, in case of Korea, uh, we can think about it, but uh, you know, in terms of sovereign interest, uh, European ETS market is a lot bigger than the data of the Korea. And technically, they even if they look the similar, but there are many differences. So uh, as uh, Korea would do not want to link its uh, Korean stock market with uh, you know stock market in Wall Street of the United States, same reason will be applied to this. So we have to be very careful about this in case Korea would like to do so. It's just my personal opinion, but I think that's very important. And then uh, in these days, as you saw in Glasgow last year, there was a lot of discussions about the important role of the forest and land use. So, uh, you know, some people say that there is already about the one gigaton, you know, credits available uh, in case of the forest sector. And then uh, many of the countries, whenever they talk about the forest sector, they talk about Red Plus. Why Red Plus? As you know, that Red Plus was forest sector somehow made a you know very fast progress, even under the Kyoto Protocol, to you know meet uh, not only the uh, you know crediting uh, you know you know needs, but also uh, promoting sustainable development and transferring requirement in the forest sector. Actually, the mechanism has been already developed except how to transfer uh, those uh, Red Plus credits from country A to country B. So my whole point is that if you take a look at Article 5 of the Paris Agreement, uh, it's all about the forest sector, right? And then this forest sector, actually this Article 5 can, and then if you uh, generate the credits, right? Red Plus doesn't necessarily imagine in transferring the credits to be generated by Red Plus project activities, but if country A, host country, would like to transfer some credits to country B, that becomes the Article 6.2 mechanism. In, other, in the case that that Article 6 uh, mechanism will be a combination of using Article 6.2 and Article, 6 Article 5, that concerns about the forestry. Okay? In case of, uh, you know, Japan, they developed, uh, where is it? Yeah, uh, they developed uh, this mechanism called the joint crediting mechanism. This uh, JCM was developed under the Kyoto Protocol, not under the Paris Agreement. So this was the sort of the voluntary mechanism developed by a country called Japan, together with uh, its partner countries, uh, mainly developing countries. Right? They developed their own crediting mechanisms right? uh, at the bilateral level and by complying the necessary requirements under the Kyoto Protocol. And then I know that the Japan would like to use the JCM. I think uh, if necessary, they will modify this a little bit in order to comply with the necessary requirements under the Paris Agreement, but they would still use the JCM. So here, JCM, for instance, uh, will be one of the examples. I think the Japan will continue to use it. This is a one example of Article 6.2 uh, mechanism. And then, as I said, countries, if they want, 
they can develop the other mechanisms as much as they want. As long as they comply with what? Sustained development requirement, environmental integrity requirement. Okay? All right. And this uh, corresponding adjustment, uh, you know, detailed rules will be governed uh, not only by the Article 6, but Article 13 of the Paris Agreement. Article 13 of the Paris Agreement concerns about the transparency requirement. Transparency means MRV, okay? Uh, submitting the BTR or national inventory, all these things are uh, governed by Article 13 in general, and Article 6 has its own uh, you know, requirements. So whenever uh, you deal with implement Article 6 toward the NDC, then the, you must uh, consider you know, fulfillment of the both Articles 6 and 13. All right, this is also important. Okay. Now, let's go to uh, rules, modalities, and procedures of the Article 6.4. As I said, uh, you know, Article 6.4 mechanism, uh, uh, this one is not about uh, transferring the ETMOs, but it's about uh, generating the units. And as you can see, many of them are very, very technical. Details will be similar to that of the CDM, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they will be all identical. There are some modifications and then the developments or changes, and the countries uh, will actually talk about the more details from this year to come up with this. And I think that uh, it will take uh, one, two, or two or three years to actually operationalize the Article 6.4 mechanism by the UNFCCCC. There is a definition section, role of the conference party serving as the meeting of the parties to the Paris or CMA role, and then because it's a top down, and the supervisor body needs to be uh, developed. And then, uh, as we all know, that the CDM under the CDM it has a similar body, and then I think a similar one will be developed uh, under the Paris Agreement and the participation responsibilities. And then activity cycle, you know, talks about some of the details, and then these will be pretty much similar once again to the CDM, but not identical, but the similar mechanism registry uh, will be important, uh, especially in the context of the you know. And this implementation as well. As I said, the share of the proceed, how much uh, share of the proceed? 5%. Overall uh, mitigation in global emissions, how much? 2%. And avoiding the use of emission reduction by more than one party, in other words, uh, avoiding double counting, and use of emission reduction for other international mitigation purposes. As I said, this will become a little bit uh, tricky. And then important, especially for the private sectors. Uh, and then uh, we didn't think uh, in the negotiations that this one will be included in the final you know, rule book. But uh, suddenly uh, last year, uh, this one was included and to ensure the uh, participation of private sector. But uh, all these uh, other interest of purposes is uh, emission reductions are subject to Corresponding adjustment. What does this mean? This will generate a lot of discussion. Anyway, it will subject to corresponding adjustment. So if uh, any credits will be transferred from country A, host country, to somewhere by private sector, say voluntary market in the United States, still they have to provide uh, you know, something right, to the UNFCCC, that's corresponding adjustment, right? Then how to do it, that's a very tricky part. Uh, and then transition of the clean development mechanism activity because uh, there are still CERs available out there, so how to do it, basically they can be developed, uh, they can be developed and used only for the limited time, okay? So details are provided here. This is a final uh, slide. Uh, I know that uh, Article 6 uh, mechanisms uh, can be used uh, between or for a uh, developed country or developed countries, right? However, major benefits in terms of the role of the host countries will be developing countries. In the sense that I'd like to emphasize several important things here. Number one, a big difference, even if I didn't uh, uh, write it down here, 
under the Kyoto, developing countries didn't have to report outcome of the emission reduction activities like a CDM implementation, right? They didn't have a you know obligation to do so. Only developed countries to do so. Under the Paris Agreement, both developing countries and developed countries they have to report emission reduction you know outcome to the UNFCCC in every two years through BTL. Do you know how different uh, this uh, requirements would be? And in, in other words, when you transfer ITMOS from country A and country B, that's the uh, meaning of the uh, change in the ownership of the mitigation outcome by country A to country B, by country B, right? Country A, as long as they realize that actually they can generate more benefits out of controlling their ownership, they will surely do it. So developing country would be more interested in, more critical in transferring ITMOS, mitigation outcomes, right? So that's number one. Some countries like Ecuador, uh, in their constitution, uh, it uh, reads that it includes a, a provision which prevents you know, credits are generated by private sectors from moving out of uh, Ecuador. So uh, that's one example. This country would like to control the ownership of the credits. And then that has a general implication. I'm not asking all the developing countries to consider this, but anyway, uh, my point is that the situation, general situation has been changed a lot. Uh, so at the national level, uh, Importance of developing national inventory in accordance with transfer requirement articles 13 and 6 of the Paris Agreement. As I said, uh, everything, corresponding adjustment, uh, it started with uh, a country's inventory and it ends with another country's inventory. So, national inventory, maintaining national inventory in accordance with the requirements of the Paris Agreement is very critical if developed countries would like to use Article 6 as a window for climate finance and to promote technology transfer. So often, it will lead to a situation where a developing country needs to establish a government unit to deal with implementing Article 6. CDM unit cannot handle all of this. Okay, so it has a broader implications. And then uh, it didn't exist before in any country. So you have to design that uh, government unit uh, in accordance with your national circumstances, considering the requirements of the Article 6 and Article 13 of the Paris Agreement. At the international level, uh, there is a need to understand the potential of the Article 6 mechanism to be used for securing climate finance. Don't, don't forget this. Rule of Article 6 doesn't need to include the details. As I'm talking about 6.2, there are many flexibility. It's up to you, not the UNFC secretary will design it for you, okay? ITMOs are not credits per se. So if you say that ITMOs are CDM credits or you know, ETS credit, you are wrong, right? ITMOs are not credits. Well, on um, final slide, uh, this is uh, some of the uh, you know, pictures of uh, my team's activities in regard to Article 6. We sometimes develop uh, you know, implementation of the uh, ODA projects with uh, African country. We organize international conferences in Korea. Also, we organize uh, side events and then COP, and uh, we have done a lot of things. So uh, uh, my today's lecture is based on not only uh, my understanding on the text, but also uh, based on the, my team's experience in the working together with many countries uh, and experts uh, inside and outside Korea in regard to Article 6. So uh, thank you very much. If you have more questions, and you can uh, email me. And then you may also visit uh, some of the websites that I direct, uh, CS Lab. And then there is a small research center on campus uh, of the Korea University. And I provided those websites to you as well. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.